Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again. Today we have a gigantic box here in the studio. Let me tell you, it has got some heft to it. This thing is full of probably 2022 diecast. So without further ado, if you can, give it a huge thumbs up, guys. And uh, let's go and open this box up. This is a big box, guys. So you're in, you're, you're in, you know, tuning into a fun <laughs> video that we're gonna have today. I have an idea what's in it, but they've had so many different, like, shipments come out, I kind of lose track what it could be. So, it, it's going to be a goodie box, so let's just say that. So, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Oh, my goodness, you can already see the die cast right there at the top. Oh, my goodness, this thing is loaded. Let's go ahead and have some fun with this. Of course, this is from our friends over there at Circle B Diecast. Uh, well, check this out. This is a freaking awesome car right here. This is Todd Gillen's firstphasecar.com Ford Mustang. And like I was mentioning, uh, these are from our friends at Circle B Diecast. Uh, of course, you could save on shipping with the promo code down below. Uh, it helps out. The channel allows me to do reviews on all the diecasts you will see uh, in this video. Wow, this is going to be a cool car here. I've, I've seen OBB and uh, LW3 uh, post a video about this car. This thing looks so much better in person. It's one of those cars that, it, when, when you're looking at it on camera, I feel like it could be a little bit mis, mis, you know, misleading because the detail is so fine that the, the camera's optics might not be able to really pull it up. That is a cool-looking paint scheme. Let's go ahead and keep it going, man. Uh, we got, ooh, check this one out, the Kevin Harvick subway car. Oh, what an iconic paint scheme already with the, you know, the rivalry between Chase and Harvick in 2021. And I think he ran this at Fontana. And uh, what a beautiful car. Shame it's missing the Bush logo. Like, there's just a gigantic piece of real estate missing on the roof and the sides. But if you have a decal set, you can fix that super quick. Awesome looking. And the next car we have is, oh boy, it is Mr. Kyle Busch. And yes, it has the chrome numbers. Look at that. Look how cool that, that is so cool. Um, this, this, you know, chrome numbers are not available in the authentic slide. We've covered that a lot here in the video. So if you are a fan of Kyle Busch and you want to have that chrome number on there, uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to get it in the gold series, fellas. So... Uh, they are costing a little bit more. I think this one was still at their original price, but I, I think the Truex version of the Dewalt car, if I am if I am mistaken or I'm not mistaken, that is, uh, it's going to be I think a dollar more because of the, the foil that it, it's required. Which you know everything's going up. You know it's just kind of one of them things you just have to just um, unfortunately accept. But it is what it is. We got a Brad Keselowski Ford Mustang here in the studio. This is the Kohler Generators Ford Mustang. Wow, this is a cool looking piece. You know, whenever I seen this car on track, I think he ran it at the Daytona 500. And I want to say he won the dual race in this car. It just has like a retro vibe to it. Like, I don't know what it is, but it just really reminds me of like Daryl Waltrip's uh, you know, number 17 Western Auto car from the 90s would have had that chrome reflective number and just the transition with the white, the light blue, and the dark blue. I just feel like this is a paint scheme. Maybe not the bottom portion, but this three-tone pattern you could see possibly in the 90s with that chrome number. Unfortunately, it looks like there's some type of chip or something uh, right there on the number, so that's kind of unfortunate, but uh, uh, what an awesome look at die cast right there. Let's go ahead and keep digging here in the box. Let's see what else we have in here. Oh, it's another Brad Keselowski Ford Mustang. And once again, chrome numbers. This one's probably going to find its way into the authentics line, just like the Kohler Generators Ford. This one has a matte finish, so it's going to make the numbers shine even more. My only pet peeve with this car, why did they not do chrome roof numbers? I don't know if they're allowed to, right, because of the spotters and the reflection. Like, you'd be like that, you know how it's reflecting on your screen. But I just think it looks really goofy having a flat number on the roof and then you're having beautiful chrome numbers on the side. I, I'm not a fan of that. I know they don't do it on this one, but it's a different color on the roof, so it looks fine. But if you're going to do just a flat gray number on the roof, it looks it looks crappy to me. I would have done a white number, and I think that would have looked a lot better. But regardless, uh, what a cool-looking die cast there. Like on the Kyle Busch car, they do uh, have a white number on the roof. So it doesn't look so bad, right? Ooh, check this one out here. The first Landon Castle die cast released in how many years? This is so cool. This is the, if, if I am mistaken, guys, 
This is the first ever Xfinity Colleague Racing diecast that is not a promo because they did make Ross Chastain's 2019 um, uh, paint scheme, and it was a promo. Um, I don't think they've made any other paint schemes. They had, you know, Jim Burton there. They had, you know, obviously AJ. Speaking of AJ, they're offering a four-car set of all four of his Roval wins, guys. I'm telling you, that is going to be an extremely hot seller. If you're an AJ Albedinger fan, it is the greatest opportunity you've had to get one of his 164 Xfinity diecasts. Get it. Pre-order it. And I'll even parlay that with another one, guys. Noah Gregson's four Xfinity wins in a row are now offered in the 164 scale. So that's two amazing four-car sets you can add to your collection. Um, it's the raced win for the Noah Gregson, so it's going to have the dirt and the detail and all that good stuff. But this is amazing. The Voyager, um, or yeah, Voyager Landon Castle car. Oh my goodness, man. This is this could be a car that dries up in the future. I don't know how many they're making of that. I thought that sponsor was going away, to tell you the truth. Now, we got one right here. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'm not a fan of this one here. Check this out. So, instead of them doing the chrome metallic numbers like they should have, they just did the flat decal ones. And the reason why I have a bone to pick with this right here, this paint scheme looks like crap compared to Kevin Harvick's ream paint scheme. Look how much real estate they actually use on the Kevin Harvick car. They put the ream.com, nice and bold font. They do nothing on the Christopher Bell. So to me, they dropped the ball big time with that one. That's my honest opinion there, guys. However, extremely grateful to have it. Uh, but the, the DeWalt car has the reflective number. So why didn't they do that? I have no idea, but I'm... I really wish they would fix it. Maybe on the raced win version of it, they'll fix it. And oh, Kurt Busch, first Kurt Busch Toyota diecast ever made. Uh, the Money Lion Toyota Camry. I, I tell you what, it has been a, a a season to remember and a season to forget for Kurt Busch. I mean, he was running so well. He won at Kansas in the Jordan car, which I've seen the 164 scale of that, guys. Let me tell you, if you have not pre-ordered that piece, I cannot stress it enough. It is fantastic. And there's like no confetti from what I've seen on that car. So you can actually use that for your die-cast stop motions and your die-cast racing. It just has some dirt and grime on the front, which, I mean, if you really think about it, you're not going to really notice that. It is incredible. Awesome money lion paint scheme there. Let's go ahead and keep digging here in this box. This thing is loaded and finally the good version of the Hooters diecast. Yes. Look, the, the the Chase Elliott Hooters car that they had in Wave 3 is atrocious. The decal quality was so botched on there. It had the incorrect uh, bow tie on the hood. This is the true correct version of this paint scheme. You could see kind of the aluminum alloy style wheels. Beautiful. And, and let me tell you, the orange on this thing... It's not day glow, obviously, because it's you know it's you know it's like a buffalo orange, but it's really bright. I like it, guys. This is a good looking diecast. Can't wait to review uh, that paint scheme there. Let's go ahead and keep digging here in the box. And ooh, Kyle Busch, the final. Oh, what in the world? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that 18 there, guys. I'm sorry. Look at that. Oh no, that's. It's no bueno. Well, but at least if I need a donor car, I know where to look. Uh, I was going to say this is the final FOM chocolate paint scheme for Kyle Busch. Let's look at this side of the car because it looks... I mean, this even this side's a little bit... I don't know. It, it's a little bit wonky jaw, but... I was trying to say, I love this paint scheme. I'm a huge fan of the retro 50s kind of sedan paint schemes. I could, you know, this is definitely a, a, a very retro 50s style color. And to see it on a stock car, I love it. Huge fan of the classic cars. Even the roof number is wonky jaw. So I don't know if it's just the decal set they used for that. I don't know what it is, but it, it, it's not. It's no bueno. It, 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 it's, no, it's no bueno. And oh, look at this car, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Th th this thing is just popping. The Violent Defense Ford Mustang. The front's a little bit raised here, but the number's clearly crooked there, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, let's look at this side because this is the correct side of the car. 
look how beautiful this is. It's got like a LSU purple with like a metallic, I don't know what you call that. It's like a pink metallic energy drink like reflection uh, number. Wow. Th this car is just popping, yo. I love it. I'm, I'm loving that die cast. And that car ran at the Bush Clash, I believe. I remember seeing it and saying, man, I need a die cast of it. And then, bam, it's Mr. Kyle Larson who got um, <laughs> got eliminated in the playoffs. It's been an interesting week for Kyle Larson fans, unfortunately. you know He's my second favorite driver, but wow, does this paint scheme look hot. Oh, my goodness. So usually when I see these next-gen cars, and I, I've, I've noticed this a lot, the logos appear to be different on the real pieces, like the real cars from the diecast time or two. Well, I've noticed on the diecast, the logos are larger, and this is a great example of it. I don't remember the Valvoline logo and all this mumbo-jumbo being this large on the real race car. I remember there was more red and was more spaced out. This thing looks like a complete paint scheme. Like, it truly looks like they took all the real estate they could. It looks so much better than the real race car because they used more of the middle there. Uh, at least that's what I can remember. I think he ran it back in the springtime, but it looks fantastic. And whoo, check this one out here. Ross Chastain's primary paint scheme, the Advent Health Chevrolet Camaro. Whenever they were showing the, uh, the, the paint schemes for the start of the season, you know, the previews, this was my favorite one. And the reason why is the number one, if you notice, it's a single digit number, but look how far in the middle it is. It is the closest thing we have had to a traditional stock car uh, number that we've seen the past four or five decades. Uh, but yeah, you can see how close it is to the middle. And every time I see that paint skin, I'm like, wow, that car looks great. Um, definitely loving uh, that paint scheme. Probably, probably my favorite primary early on in the season. And uh, check this one out. Ty Dillon, finally another die cast for this cat. Unfortunately, they never made, um, what was it, his Joe Gibbs Racing paint scheme from, I think, was it 2020 or 2021? No, 21. When he ran at uh, the Xfinity Daytona race. This is awesome. The Black Rifle Coffee Company 42 car. We're going to have so many die cast reviews, guys. We're going to be chock-loaded with the reviews. I mean, I still got reviews for 2021 I got to catch up on. I mean, it's incredible. So, I mean, we're going to be loaded on the channel. If you have not subscribed, guys, there's never been a better time to join the uh, the group, the family here uh, on Diecast Buffet and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on these epic Diecast reviews. This is one main look at Chevrolet Camaro and as a huge coffee fan, I've never tried Black Rifle coffee, right? Uh, but as a huge coffee drinker, that Diecast is in my wheelhouse. I love coffee, okay? I, I usually like to drink it before I do these videos, guys. Oh, check this one out. This is the first raced win uh, next-gen points-paying car. The first raced win in my collection. I, I, I don't know. If, I don't think the Clash win is in this box because it was sold out at Circle B uh, whenever I went to go order it. But this is the Daytona 500 car. This is the Daytona 500 car. So if you're new to the channel, I have a little tradition I like to do. I have this box. It's like a little shadow box, if you will, or whatnot. Anyways, it, it has it was a Daytona 500 cologne box, and I, every year I take the race winning car or a the, the primary paint scheme that won the race, and I put it in there for the whole year. I've had Michael McDowell's 34 car uh, in there since he won the 500 last year. Well, now that we have the Austin Cindric, we can kind of do that uh, uh, that swap, and that'll be the first next gen car. I've been doing that since 2011. When um uh when Trevor Bain won the 500, <laughs> and we got Kyle Larson's Fontana win here. This is so cool. And I'll finish that point real quick on the on the the the, the 21 car. I actually had to use an 01 Elliott Sadler diecast because I had no 2011 pieces that year. This is the Fontana win, and most likely will be the final Fontana 164 ever made. I mean, unless Chase Sale or Mr. Larson himself wins it next year. Unfortunately, Auto Auto Club is going to be a uh, it's going to be a short track, which I think is really stupid. Especially since the the next gen car. This is how crazy it is, guys. The next gen car races ten out of ten perfect at the Auto Club two mile configuration, but the next gen car struggles at short tracks. So why would they take a track that is 
proven to be fantastic. Michigan and Auto Club are fantastic with a next-gen car, and they're going to move it to a short track. I think it's asinine. I think it's so stupid. I mean, I love Fontana. It's one of my favorite racetracks. I think it's so stupid, guys. And we have Joey Logano's Penzel Ford Mustang. I'm just going to go ahead and say it here. This should have been his primary paint scheme. Notice how they actually used the whole side pot of the car. Notice how there's texture and detail and there's grooves. I mean, if you truly look at it, it, it reminds me of looking at a Penzel bottle of oil. That's what it reminds me of. When I look at a Shell Penzel car, I feel like they just put random logos and there's a little red trim. No, this has detail all over it, guys. This is how you do a paint scheme, fellas. I love this car. This is a really, really nice paint scheme. Of course, with those beautiful chrome-esque wheels. Gotta love that detail, guys. I mean, we're, th this is the biggest next-gen haul that we have had. And what's crazy, there's still boxes in here. And, oh, look at this one. Harrison Burton with the Dex Imaging Ford Mustang. This is the second Harrison Burton die cast to be made ever in the NASCAR 164 scale. They never made any of his Supras, which was just stupid. This car looks fantastic, guys. Uh, you have that, once again, that chrome alloy style wheels. And I'm not sure, but I remember the 21 car, uh, the primary that is. Yeah, I, don't, I think it had black wheels. So that is kind of interesting. Perhaps that was a very, very early approved production sample. And uh, they didn't really know what to do with the wheels. But now that they know what the fans like and maybe the quality control X, Y, and Z... This is a great looking car. Once again, they used the entire side pod. They didn't pull a, a Kevin Harvick Hunt Brothers pizza and just put it right here in the side and leave this whole panel. No, use the entire car, guys. This is how you do a paint scheme. I love it. I love it. It looks good. We got, uh, oh, finally, finally, we have a Diddy Hamlin die cast. <laughs> it is Diddy Hamlin's FedEx Express Toyota Camry. And I'm going to keep it honest with you. I think this paint scheme looks fantastic. The only gripe I have about Hamlin's race cars is they never change the color of them. I don't know why. I have always loved, I mean, loved the Gen 5 Denny Hamlin paint schemes, because one week they'd go to New Hampshire and have blue on the car. Then they'd go to Pocono and he'll have green, or they'd go to Indy and have red. Why can't we get some coloration on these FedEx cars? I don't care if they're, you know, if that's their one true company color nowadays. Just something. I mean, just something. I miss those paint schemes. I miss those paint schemes. And you think about the marketability of it. Imagine how many more die casts they would sell of this man right here if they would change the paint scheme colors. I'm just saying, they would sell probably five times more die cast because as a Hamlin fan, you really only need, to, only need to buy one car. Well, guess what? If he has five different paint schemes, well, that's five different cars. And holy cow. Whoa. Check this one out here. This is the worth Ford Mustang. And believe me, it is worth it. It is Ryan Blaney's uh, amazing looking worth Ford Mustang. This thing is incredible, guys. Wow. I've ever seen this car on track on TV, and I fell in love with it. Sure, it's not the 2019, 2020, and 21 uh, Brad Keselowski worth car that I just absolutely adore. Uh, but this paint scheme looks fantastic. It gives me kind of a a 90s, kind of like a sports apparel vibe with it. Just the way that the lines are and the grooves. It looks really clean. I like this car, guys. Um, you can see a little bit of some decal uh, nuances you can see how the stripes are a little bit wonky jaw in certain portions of the race car, especially right here. Uh, it just looks like there's some going up, some going down. But you know what? You're going to have that. Check out that red spoiler. This is a good looking car, guys. I am so excited to get these reviews for y'all. Wow. Alrighty, folks. Talk about the biggest next-gen haul that we have had. Oh my goodness, every paint scheme, every driver you can imagine. I mean, Ty Dillon, Todd Gillen, Kurt Busch, Harrison Burton. We got race to win die cast. We finally got a Hamlin die cast. Alternate paint schemes. It's incredible. And I tell you what, man, out of all these next-gen cars, how can you pick a favorite? I, I don't know what to pick. I love the race to win Cendric. I love the Larson Fontana. But man, that Ross Chastain car, that Kevin Harvick subway car, even the Kyle Busch DeWalt car, 
the Brian Kozlowski Kohler Generators. I can't pick a favorite one out of the next-gen ones, but I tell you what, I will pick one uh, favorite out of the Xfinity cars in this in this haul. I love that Lane and Castle car, guys. I've, I'm so glad that one got made. Uh, incredible, incredible stuff. Huge thank you to all of our friends over there at Circle B for uh, getting these cars over here, man. I greatly appreciate everything they do over there. Awesome freaking die cast haul. And now this is the million dollar question, guys. Which one of these cars do you, or is it is it pointing this way or this way? I don't know. <laughs> uh, which one of these cars do y'all want me to review first on the channel? I have no idea. I have no earthly idea what to review first. I still got uh, I still got this Kevin Harvick car here. I got the the Halloween Kyle Busch car, the the Phoenix Kyle Larson. I got I got two 2021 Kevin Harvick diecasts. I got Byron next gen. Oh my goodness, Logano, Kevin Hart. We've got so many freaking diecasts and just so thankful and blessed for these cars, guys. So I want to say thank you all so much for watching the video. If you can, please give it a huge thumbs up. This is a long video. It's going to take some time to edit and get all that stuff out. Uh, but yeah, thank you all again for watching. Have a swell day out there, guys. Diecast Buffet. Signing off.